Hey guys, this is Ryan from the Weightlifting Way of Life podcast. Uh, just want to say thank you for listening uh, first, and uh, please bear with us on the audio, audio in this first episode. Uh, it's a little rough. We, we had some technical difficulties, ended up having to take the audio from the camera. So please bear with us. Uh, in this episode, we're kind of just going to do an introduction, talk about each of us, uh, talk about Bailey and his trip through CrossFit into weightlifting. Uh, we're going to talk about CJ and his trip through life and the way that he's uh, he started in strength and conditioning and found physical therapy and found CrossFit and the way he's uh, deviated from what is normal uh, in the physical therapy world today. And then also my uh, trip from high school to college football uh, into weightlifting and CrossFit and into uh, gym ownership. So, are we good? Yep. Let's do this. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Weightlifting Way of Life podcast. Uh, my name is Ryan Capers. I'm here with Bailey Forrest and Dr. C.J. De Palma. Uh, here to talk a, a lot about training, a lot about recovery, and a lot about life. So, uh, we want to start out today just talking about let everybody introduce yourself and talk about a little bit about ourselves. Bailey, you have to go first. Okay, I guess I'll go first. Well, I'm one of uh, Ryan's athletes. I'm a weightlifter. Um, it's basically all I do. I came in here about a year ago. Decided I wanted to just do weightlifting. I started as a CrossFitter, and they just made me fall in love with weightlifting. Well, that's awesome. So, what started your journey on weightlifting overall? Where did it start at in the beginning? Uh, well, I started CrossFitting because our football coaches did it. Uh, we just used that as training for football, and then moved moved into that. Really liked CrossFit, liked the CrossFit Games, liked what they were doing. So I just continued doing that, uh, and then. I started as a powerlifter in high school, so I obviously enjoyed lifting heavy weights and combining CrossFit and lifting heavy weights. Perfect thing. And uh, and, and I know you were doing uh, like true CrossFit, like in a park CrossFit for a while. Mm. Tell us tell us something about that. Yeah, well, uh, I just did basically CrossFit out of the garage. Um, I didn't have a lot of equipment. I got I got a pair of rings for Christmas. Got a kettlebell, um, and just use that stuff. How just, big was the kettlebell? It was only thirty pounds. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I, I got a lot of a lot of crap for that, but that's okay. I, it, it got the job done. I'm I'm sure the rust from using it outside probably made it a good 32, 33 uh, yeah, over time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dust is always good. Yeah. And so uh, I know whenever you came here, uh, when I first saw you, you were kind of in that phase of of uh, crossfitting out of the trunk of your car. Uh, to what what brought you to weightlifting from CrossFitter? Because at that time, obviously, you were pretty uh, green, right? You were just doing the the more calisthenic side of CrossFit. What transitioned you to weightlifting? Uh, well, I knew that to be a really good CrossFitter, you needed to have a very big found strength foundation. So I knew you had to be really good at the Olympic lifts. I was snatching clean and jerk, and I at the time I did not have a snatch. I had no idea how to do that. Uh, I was just trying to teach myself, um, and then just on the way, just learning it. I just liked weightlifting a lot more. Just like the the style of it. Definitely, and uh, and I'll say, uh, the first time I saw Bailey come into the gym, uh, it was it was very sloppy, right? I mean, he taught himself off of YouTube, so that's to be expected, but. It was, everything was so fast and, you know, anybody that, you know, is, is in the world of weightlifting understands that as a, for a, a lighter weightlifter, speed is extremely important and, and that's obviously a very controversial topic, but speed, if you see, if, if you see a guy that has the ability to move fast around the bar, they usually have the ability to be a, a very strong weightlifter. So that was, that was very exciting to see that and then you know, tighten the screws up and, and, uh, what are, what are some of your numbers right now? And, and how long have you been weightlifting? Uh, in a week, I think it's been a year. So I've been weightlifting for basically a year. What's your best, uh, competition total and what are your numbers in training? Oh, uh, competition total. Uh, hit a 96 kilo snatch and 130 clean jerk. Weighing, uh, under 77 kilos. Yeah. It was 77. Uh, and what and are then, your best training numbers right now? Right now I'm right at 77 kilos and what oh, hit a 320 clean today. Uh, I don't know what that is in kilos, 
but 143 kilo clean and jerk. What a real weight lifter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then a 110 snatch. Nice. Nice. So definitely moving, definitely moving some loads, moving some loads. And where, where are you going with weightlifting? What's that look like for your future? Going as far as you can. Right. And, and I know somebody that obviously gets to spend a lot of time with you. Uh, you have, you're doing, you're in the process of doing a, a, what not a lot of people are willing to do, uh, for sport. That's not outside of an extremely organized sport, like a, like a football or a baseball or something like that, where there's a clear cut path for what you've got to do to get to an, uh, an elite level, you know, something like weightlifting or CrossFit or uh, powerlifting, these outside sports, these non-hyper-structured sports, it, it, it puts people in a lot of very hard positions. And, and what you're doing is uh, you're sacrificing everything in your life for weightlifting. And at a very early stage of weightlifting, not a lot of people are willing to do that. But because you've done that, you've seen tremendous gains by doing that, what you've put, uh, what we talked about the other day is close to 150 pounds on your total in just not even a year. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that you're, you're making decisions that a young weightlifter usually doesn't make. And, and I think you're doing that. It's going to propel you to a, a high level quickly. Yeah. Uh, I'm, and I'm extremely blessed with the opportunities you've given me, uh, just being able to, oh, I quit my job a couple months ago. And that has just improved my weightlifting immensely. Just being able to just focus on weightlifting, focus on coaching and learning as uh, an athlete and a coach, and both of those working together, I think it's just improving my weightlifting. Yeah. And CJ, you're somebody that gets to work with a lot of athletes. I mean, how, how common is that? Do you see a lot of like CrossFitters? I know you work with a ton of CrossFitters and definitely a lot of weightlifters. How often do you see things like people that are willing to go all the way? Um, it's everyone is is willing to, just some people just don't do it, right? Right. I guess everyone wants to. A lot of people don't. They, yeah, um, they having want. Right. Is right. <laughs> so, um, you know, to get paid or to make a sport such as like powerlifting, weightlifting, CrossFit, um, your primary life is free. Um, like a. I don't know, maybe like a unicorn, right? Yeah, you know, very, sure. very few people can do it. Um, and just to clarify what Bailey said, he did say if you quit your job, <laughs> you get better at weightlifting. <laughs> so, um, so right, everyone depends listening, on the job, right? Everyone listening, make sure you just quit working. Yeah, just quit, quit that job. Um, yeah, it's only yeah, bad. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, from it's the, the only guy, thing from the guy who's been in school for eight years. <laughs> yeah. um, so, uh, it's it's definitely tough. I've seen the people who can do it. Um, no one in this town is able to. Uh, where we live, it's just not possible, um, at least in CrossFit. Uh, uh, maybe weightlifting, but CrossFit's not. You know, what leads you to say that? It's just not possible here. The talent, I mean, I'm going to be honest, the talent level is not high enough. Mm. And I think that plays a lot of role in it. It's like, you know, how good are you? Yeah. Is it justifiable? Um, now, talent talent's something that I think is, a, is an incredibly interesting thing in mm. CrossFit, right? Yeah, I mean, it's... Probably because it's so new, mm -hmm. right? But, uh, you know, talent is something that's talked about heavily in every other sport, right? Mm -hmm. For for football, right? If you're six foot five and you're 200 pounds and you mm -hmm. can bench and clean through the roof and uh, you can run a, you know, a sub four, five, 40, you have a lot of football talent. I just said say, what did you say Saquon Barkley? Oh, yeah. So yeah, right. right. And, it, you know, if you can throw, if you can throw a baseball 100 mile an hour, you have a lot of baseball talent, right? right? So to you... And, and I know we're kind of getting off of the introduction idea right now. To you, what does talent, with, with air quotes, uh, look like in CrossFit? Um, you know, I think it's just the ability to... Or how do you quantify it? I'm yeah, sure. I mean, I don't think it's truly quantifiable. I mean, I guess everything in CrossFit is technically quantifiable. That's why it's all done under time. Or is it just right? too many places? Right. I mean, there's it's just there's so many variables, right? Mm. There's so many variables, but it is all cross broad domain, right? Which is time. Right. Um, you know, and uh, so it's forced production over time, right? So... Uh, you get someone, you're like, oh, it's your first day in CrossFit, and they go in the rings, they do 10 uprises, guess what? They're talented. Right. They're just going to have it, you know? Or, you know, you're like, okay, we're going to do Fran, and their first Fran ever is like six minutes, and they do it again three months later, and it's three minutes. It's talent. You just, it's not like they got that fit that fast, you know what yep. I mean? They didn't, and you just, you just see it. Some people have it. Some people are just built for it. You know, the sport, just like all sports, there's a design for the appropriate body type. 
and CrossFit has finally found the mold. Um, mm-hmm. It took them. It took the sport like six, seven, seven years. Right. Like 2015, you really start to see everyone start to look yeah. the same. Would be was like average five, five, foot nine, nine 160 hundred sixty something pounds. No, 180, 180, 180, 180, I'm sorry. Yeah, 180 to one hundred ninety five pounds. Um, you know, and uh, and then the strength numbers. Shorter, like, shorter legs, yeah. longer upper body, right? You know, and just uh, built like a weightlifter. Imagine yeah. that. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, it's the ability. I mean. Hey, I would say 70, no, 60% of CrossFit is the ability to move the barbell efficiently. Right. I, I, I've never you. seen a weak guy win the CrossFit Games. Yeah, no, definitely It's not. usually the guys um, are in the top top 10% strength-wise in right. the pool. Yeah. yeah. Right. Not that all those other things are not important, because right. obviously they are, because yeah. Sam Dancer isn't winning the CrossFit Games anytime soon. Right, but he also can't win Olympic clubs worth a damn. That man clean and jerks 400 pounds. He cleans 400 pounds. Cleans 400 pounds. I don't think he jerks 400 pounds. Fair enough. <laughs> I, I, I stepped over the line. Yeah, I think you just, which is a big difference. I mean, a lot of people have been clean, high, high numbers. Right. But I guess we can go ahead and cancel him from coming on the show. Yeah, anytime. sorry, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, we'll all just uh, we'll just paint our fingernails in and uh, approval of him yeah. coming on. So it's okay. Yeah, but Bailey, that was awesome. I think that's an excellent story. And and one of the things I, I love about us getting together and doing this is your perspective. I think you bring to the table from the the athlete point of view, even though you know. In our own rights, me and CJ are, are athletes, but you are the one that are going all in on being an athlete, and that that is a, that's a whole other realm that I, I've never lived, right? You know, I don't know if you have CJ, but I haven't. Right. So it's it's a it's, I'm sure it's a scary world, right? You know, not knowing how you're going to pay for your next meal, but you know, knowing that you're going to you know snatch a new total or uh, hit a new total this weekend. So uh, CJ, let's talk to you some about you know kind of where. Uh, where you are, if you could kind of give us your background a little bit. Uh, sure. So I am a physical therapist and a uh, uh, cash-based practice owner here in Pittsburgh. And uh, it's called The Movement Doctor. I've owned it for a year now. We've been open for a year. Um, I've been out of school just over a year. Well, I guess it's like 18 months now. It's crazy. I just remember when I passed my test. Um, so I was undergrad in West Florida here in Pensacola and I did strength and conditioning as my kind of what I wanted to do, exercise science, all that. And I was actually Ryan's coach, um, strength coach, volunteer for a little while. That's how me and him met. And from that, uh, the goal is, you know, when you're in the collegiate strength world, it's intern, volunteer, then to a GA, then to an assistant, then the head coach. Um, and all of those at least back in 2011 to 2012 when I was making that joint, those decisions, all of those that assist that to GA position and GA to assistant totaled like $11 a year. It was just, the pay was just immaculately low. And I just decided that that was, it wasn't feasible to raise a family on. And And, and you came up under a strength coach who, is you know not only an amazing strength coach right. i think justin swin is is one of the best strength coaches i've ever heard talk mm-hmm. you know i love the things that he says and and the way he evolves but he's very demanding i mean right. i know his staff is up there all day every day oh, yeah. when he was a strength coach i mean and that it's just a it, yeah. you got to see where the level of work can yeah. be and yeah. then the pay just doesn't it right. doesn't equal yeah it really i mean doesn't. you're looking it's a passion job yeah exactly i mean you're looking your average average work year is two thousand hours right Wow. 40 hours a week, 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year, everyone assumes two weeks of vacation with holidays and things like that, right? So, a strength coach, collegiate strength coach, especially non, just not, or not just Olympic sports, meaning football as well, I mean, you're looking at 4,000 hours a year. Wow. For, I mean, I some of these assistant jobs were like 20, 20 grand and change, and it's like, dude, that's like $4 an hour. <laughs> you know, after taxes, that's, that's a little low. That's yeah, a little, that's, kidding. that's a little tough. So, I decided against it, and I decided to go to PT school. Um, you just knew you wanted to follow movement. Yeah, I just, well, I, there was, you know, I was just like, well. To be a movement doctor of sorts. <laughs> oh, what a great name. Maybe I should be saying. Um, so, check the logo. So, um, I, uh, I decided to, like, extend my schooling to get prereqs and all that kind of stuff. And to go to PT school, I got accepted. Moved down to Miami for three years um, with my my girlfriend, then fiance, now wife. We lived in 
an efficiency about half the size of the room we're in now, wow. which is about 200 square feet with that's awesome. my puppy dog, Leroy, yeah. and we just made it work. And that's where I fell in love with CrossFit. I actually started CrossFit right before I left. Um, my dad passed away May of 2013, wow. and the same week, like two days before, I had, I had walked into my first CrossFit class at Five Flags here in Pensacola. Oh, wow. I totally and, didn't know you started. That's and, cool. Um, with Chad and all yep, that guy. Yeah. And, uh, and I fell in love with it. And then it was, you know, the craziest next two months of my life because it was completely unexpected. And and I uh, I was, like, huge into bodybuilding. I was extremely... I can tell. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Make sure you watch the YouTube version yeah. of the podcast um, to get that joke. No, so, not a small guy. Um, uh, <laughs> so I was very vain and ego driven and, and I just couldn't bear to think for myself anymore. And I just didn't want to just like, you know, the body like staring in the mirror all day. You right. know, I worked in a gym in town and, and I was just like, I'm over it. I'm over this, you know, and I was like, I'm just going to do CrossFit for these three months and we'll see how I like it. Wow. And so a moment of self-realization pulled you out of it. Yeah. Wow. And, um, uh, and I just fell in love with the sport, moved down to Miami, joined a couple gyms, tried to start a gym and, nice. um, <laughs> I, we, we did, we opened a gym and, uh, didn't, didn't work out too well. We can talk about that another time. Yes, so, please. <laughs> um, and then I joined CrossFit Soul, which was the, probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I use more in my practice about teaching movement and coaching athletes that I learned there than I did in all, you know, six figures in my PT sure. school. And you got out of there with no neck tattoos. Right. That's Which pretty cool. You only, and to be completely <laughs> honest, is 100% because of my wife. I 1,000% would have a neck tat or something. Oh I would be gosh. like tatted completely head to toe if it wasn't for my wife yeah, she yeah. says no so if you don't get that joke you really you, you got to go just check out those guys they i mean crossfit soul is definitely not only well known for for sending a team to the mm-hmm. games most mm-hmm. years if mm-hmm. not every year mm-hmm. but also having a, gr- a great weightlifting team right. as well and and they just have their own kind of culture yeah. in the fitness world it's 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 yes. really cool really interesting yeah. um so so, you know, I, I think a lot of what I'm able to do now in the CrossFit realm from what I learned there. And then, so that was during while I was at FIU and PT school. And then I graduated, moved to Orlando uh, to finish up rotations and um, pass my boards. My wife got a job there and we were there training at a couple of gyms in town, kind of bouncing around. And then the guys at Mako CrossFit um, are good friends of mine. Um, one of the owners, Kevin, and his wife, Lori, and my and wife. How do you know that? Uh, so I met I met Kevin through my wife. His wife and uh, Lori and my wife Karen were like childhood best friends. Oh, so wow. I've known Kevin for like six or seven years, and God, I can't it's been that long. <laughs> um, and so I'd always come in and, and come into town and train at Mako and hang out with them. I met Brandon and Seth. And then we were just out one day and they, they said, you know, what's it going to take to get you up here to open a practice? And I was like, well, just let me pass my boards and, uh, it'll take a car and some gas and I'll be here. I mean, I don't, I don't need anything from you guys. We'll just figure it out. So November, 2016, one night me and my wife were talking and we couldn't figure out what we were going to do because she didn't know if her job was going to let her transfer. And she was just like, let's go. So I was working at a clinic in Orlando, and I just told them I wasn't coming in the next day, and we left like overnight. That couldn't have been long after you got out of school, huh? Uh, I, so I was working as a temp, uh, oh, okay. on a temp license from like September and October. I graduated in August of 16, and I was working as a temp September, October, November, and it was September, October, and then I got licensed at the end of October, um, and then I was working just as uh, like a float part-time staff. Mm-hmm. And hated every second of it. And because um, <laughs> this is your typical run of the mill PT correct, stuff. Yeah. It's, um, all right, do these exercises with these bands. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm gonna walk over here and watch TV for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully they're not watching TV. You know, but it, it's it's tough to, you know, volume has to be much higher. The you know, overhead's much higher. Right. So it's um, it's much tougher to. Which is sad you know, because that's not how you help a lot of people. Yeah, and, and it's tough. And a lot of people do get better, but you know, we'll right, talk from. Course episode to episode that time really does 
you know, help everyone. Yeah. That's right. And that's one of the reasons I made you that Um, that me and Baylor are both so excited to have you on here and and be a, be a host is that your perspective on that, the fact that you're a contrarian, I love that more than anything. Um, but that, that your realm and your view on, on recovery and training tends to differ from what's the norm, right? What's not the norm. norm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not the norm in, in our world, but the norm in the, in the actual world. Right. Right. And that's in the fact of me firsthand, having seen how much that helps people that mm-hmm. you've worked with is, is there's really a lot to say about it. And, and I love that, you know, a lot of the stuff that you've been doing on your, uh, on your Instagram page, the movement doctor and your Facebook, um, the, selfless plug. <laughs> no, I did it. So it's right. cool. Oh, so it's not selfless. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. Uh, but the, the, uh, seeing you talk with these other, um, physios, mm-hmm. right. Is that the right word? these other physios that are thinking the same way and doing the same stuff, it's really cool to see the uh, community that all of you guys share. Right. That's really, really awesome. And I, and, and I really hope to see that grow overall. You know, it's Me like, too. yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. It's <laughs> like when, it, you know, it's like when I have some, like, for instance, I had a guy uh, here sign up, you know, not even a month ago. This guy's had back pain for 20 years, chronic back pain. Took him through. I got a bowl this. Okay. Yeah. It's gotta be a bullshit. Just need to do surgery right. tomorrow. Don't take it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, he's had back pain for 20 years, works in a factory, works seven nights on seven, seven days off. Right. That's, that's so scary. it's, it's a hell of a schedule. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've known him for a long time, but he finally decided to take a leap. He got tired of Planet fitness. He's a, he's a fairly strong guy, but anyway, we do his first on ramp. Um, the day that he fell on, it happened to be a uh, our, our hinging day, so more deadlift kind of stuff, mm. right? So took a little bit extra care, talked about bracing, talked about how you're supposed to move in that, that archetype. And after I showed him how to brace, right, mm. he's like, oh, my back doesn't hurt anymore when I do that. Ah. I was like, oh, cool. And then here we are a month later. He's like, I've had no back pain. I've had back pain for the last 20 years straight, and I haven't had a single bit of back pain in the last month. Yep. Right, and, and it's just... Why is that? Dun, dun, dun. We'll talk about that later. Because I showed him uh, perfect time. posture. No. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <You're shooting yourself. laughs> uh, but, yeah, and, 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 I mean, that's a lot of stuff I've learned from you, and, and that's kind of... But but even before, you know, we got together, it's it's what I've always thought was the right way. Sure. I mean, that, that movement, movement is the medicine for... Pain, right? You know, yeah, that was good. Oh, that hey, that, yeah, good. That, that one came up the old noggin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's really cool. And so now you, you have your practice here. Yep. You opened it at Mako originally. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so yeah. So um, so thank you for the kind words. Yeah. That's very nice. Absolutely, um, man. So so yeah. So the movement doctor is um, located here in Pensacola, and it's just me. It's a, it's a single man operation, and. And we just try and educate, empower, and uh, create independence and resilience in our patients and my athletes and local coaches and CrossFit boxes and, I, you know, whatever it is, you know, it's the same, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, can you treat this, can you treat this? I'm like, I can treat anything. Not in the sense of like, am I the best for the job? Maybe not, but my model doesn't change based on your pathology or whatever's wrong. You know, I want to educate you. I want to empower you. For you to believe that you're going to get better and like when you have a bet a good mindset you know you're the ball's then in your court you right. know it's never in my court it's not my rehab it's your rehab i'm just calling plays from the sideline yeah you know so um so that's kind of what we do um with that i i program crossfit uh, i remote coach um i love to coach crossfit i wish i could make the same amount of money as a physical therapist just coaching <laughs> crossfit That'd be Good so luck with easy. that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, you know, but it's it's I, it's a very hybrid style model. You know, you would never know that someone was in rehab when they're with me. You would mm-hmm. think that it's personal training or like one on one coaching or whatever you wanted to brand right. it as. Because um, we just move and we educate and we talk and um, we just create a good healing environment. And um, the athlete or patient or whoever's in front of me you know, tends to get better over a lot of time, right? You know, and it's not anything proprietary. We just make people comfortable and um, understand that their pain will go away pretty much all the time. Yeah. It will just always go away 
yeah. as long as you give it a chance to. Um, so, so I've been very blessed to have great opportunities here in Pensacola. Um, the guys at Mako have given me more than I could have ever imagined, and um, the gyms in town here have given me the ability to come in and work with their athletes and spread spread uh, the word of like this mindset alteration and different perspective on pain, or as I kind of title it as like rethinking your rehab, mm -hmm. and and it's been fun, man. I I'm super blessed. I just bought a house. Um, well, my wife just bought a house. No one gives money to business owners ever. So she bought a house. Um, she, you live in your business, so you talking about it. I'm jealous. Um, so uh, we move in soon. And uh, yeah, I mean, I have an awesome black lab named Leroy. Other you know, things about my life. My numbers are not as awesome as Bailey's. I haven't added 150 pounds on my total. Yeah, and that's because you don't train here. That's why. Yeah, it's four of it is. <laughs> right. Stop and student. you have that's a job gone. still. That's, that's, oh, that's number right. two. Oh, shit, I have a job. <laughs> okay, well, all right. Man, I think I can get rid of the job thing. Yeah, We're getting, you get rid of the job, you're going to be in good shape. Yeah, I think so. I'll be good. I don't know if I'll still be married, but I'll be good, go. I'll be good to go. I can sleep at the gym. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's hey, good. I'm just trying to put 150 pounds on my table. Yeah, you got to yeah, follow yeah, your dreams. Sweet. Um, so, um, I don't weight lift. I mean, I weight lift, but not as like a true weight lifter. I crossfit predominantly. I'm not extremely strong. I like to crossfit, move fast for long periods of time. And yeah, I guess that's it. Um, awesome. Awesome. Well, that's great stuff. And it's a lot longer than Bailey's. I mean, my life is <laughs> yeah. more exciting, or I'm just long winded. Uh, I only do weightlifting. That's, yes. just, that's my life. <laughs> See, weightlifting. Yeah, really, how's your life? Um, weightlifting? Uh, it was supposed to be 10 minutes. The board says 10 minutes, Bailey. You said 10 seconds. Yeah. yeah good job. I get it. I'm going to go warm up for a snatch. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See you guys. Yeah. 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 But see, a simple sport calls for a simple man. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Two things, and that's it. All right, so Ryan, so let's hear about you. Uh, so my name's Ryan Capers. Um, I've been sober for three years now. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so I was born and raised oh, here in Pensacola. Uh, always was just a, just a nerdy fat kid growing up. Never did anything awesome or special. And uh, going into high school, I thought I would uh, play football because I got I thought football players got all the girls, right? I was did they? Uh, I mean, it's, it's more on an individual basis. It's not so much an umbrella statement, right? <laughs> but, uh, so, so I started playing football in high school and, uh, my freshman, sophomore year never touched the field hardly. I mean, I just did, I'd never even watched a football game, right? I, I come from a non-sports family, hunting, fishing, drag racing. That's my family. Drag racing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> It's going, cool. but, but I, I did have excellent parents that supported me in what I wanted to do. Um, anyway, so freshman, sophomore, you didn't, didn't touch the field at the end of my sophomore football season. I was like, okay, I don't want to suck anymore. This is not fun. If I'm going to keep doing this, I'd rather be better. So, uh, the, other than the, the little bit of weightlifting that we did, uh, with the football team, in quotation marks, right. With, with the air quotes, which is just, you know. If, if you've ever been around high school football, usually what they do in the weight room is atrocious. It's the farthest thing from getting somebody better. Uh, so uh, what we did there was my only exposure to training, and I, and I knew I needed to do more, right? I understood if I kept doing the same as everybody else, which is just going to school and doing the workouts in the weight room, that I would continue to get better at the same level as everybody else, at the same rate as everybody else. Right. So I would always be less than everybody else as I already was. So I was like, okay, well, I just got to do more. Right. It's math. Simple. Right. Yeah. Well, you yields results. Right. So, <laughs> so I, uh, I, I, I was at Winn Dixie with my mother. I'm, you know, 13 years old at the time. Yeah. No, I, I just turned 14. You've been in high school for two years when you turned 14. Yeah. I started early. Um, yeah, I didn't what? drive until my senior year. What? What? Yeah. Didn't. Anyway, long story. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I just I, I, my birthday was right next to the cutoff. Uh huh. Yeah. So wait, like you were two years ahead though. Yeah. That how was that? You're 15 when you got to high school most of the time, right? Uh, 14, no. 13 or 14. I graduated at 17. So did I. So did I. I knew that was gonna ring. 
Okay. I'm done. Okay. Thank you for correcting me. I just turned 15. Okay. I was just. All right. Never That's fine. I was right. just like. No, thank you. I, I was yeah. like, man, I was, I was trying to graduate high school when I was 11. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I found a, a muscle and fitness magazine. At, oh, oh, yeah. That went next Classic. It had The Rock on it. I still have it. Of course it did. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I was like, okay. And I was kind of standing there looking through it. I was like, oh, mom, can I get this? And, you know, I, I knew it had some training stuff in it. So I was like, okay, this is where I got to go. So I got that. I started watching YouTube videos, you know, following the classics like Elliot Hulse, T Nation, you know. Oh, dude. Like, Is Elliot Hulse on YouTube? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. He's, I've seen dude, he's, he's coming back. He's OG. Yeah, I, I guess I didn't realize. I mean, he's huge. Now, he's been for on sure. it forever. Really? I didn't know that. Oh, dude. Yeah, I remember watching his videos him. when he was posting videos of him training people out of his van. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so, which I got to that later, but we'll talk about that in just a second. <laughs> but, uh, so that's, that's what my life became engulfed in, was training, mm-hmm. right? And that's what I did. I started training every day after school. I'd stay after school and, and, and train as long as I could till it got dark. You know, get in the weight room, go up on the field, flip tires, all the stuff I saw on YouTube. I had no clue what I was doing. I was just moving stuff, right? And so, did that for a while and kept trying to, kept, kept evolving what I was doing and trying to understand more and more, I just became so engulfed in that world and went from uh, not playing a single snap hardly on JV my sophomore year of high school to starting both ways on varsity my junior year of high school. Uh, uh, stayed stayed in that world, stayed uh, diving into training, trying to understand more and learn more, uh, and then ended up being the only person out of my 750-person graduating class signed a Division One scholarship. So I went on to play at University of South Alabama, Played some yeah, football buddy. there. Played a couple years there where I met CJ at the time. You know, did not understand the significance of it. Um, CJ, like he said, was a was a, a undergraduate intern mm-hmm. at the time. Uh, I actually didn't know that. I thought you were a GA, to oh, be honest yeah. with you. Uh, and uh, I, you know, fell in love with training more there with uh, with with Coach Justin Schwinn, who was a strength coach there at the time. I believe the director of football operations there now. Um, just an unbelievable unbelievable coach learned so much from him and uh, from that uh, had some stuff go down ended up going to Bellhaven University spent two years there uh, found out what bad strength and conditioning coaches are like <laughs> really made me appreciate good strength coaches so at that time I really started writing my own programming right so I, I that's whenever I really started diving into the world of what programming looks like you know how to structure how to execute and uh, at this whole time that I was in college, I was training young athletes out of my car, you know, just doing little stuff on the side, mostly for free, whenever I was home. Free. Yeah. <laughs> You're paying those dues, yeah. man. And uh, so the whenever I was at Bellhaven, the summer before my senior football season, I uh, a good friend of mine was training at a gym downtown, uh, across the gym downtown, and he invited me to come. Uh, use his gym because they had open open gym all day long, right? And I was training at my old high school. And so I go down there and I, I use the gym and I was like, cool. I hated CrossFit at this time, by the way. I talk crap about CrossFit all the time. Had no idea what I was talking about. I was I was one of those people. So did I. Yeah. I was, oh, I, was I, I always loved CrossFit. Yeah. Oh, I was. I CrossFit. I well, you had a good, awesome. well, the people yeah. that brought you up in training did CrossFit. Right. Yeah. The yeah, people yeah, that brought was, me up in training yeah. probably still don't know what it is. Right. That's <laughs> you know? But, uh, but anyway, so yeah, I, so I was that kind of guy and I was like, I'm just going to use a gym. Awesome gym, you know, like 10,000 square feet, every toy you would want. I was all about it. Me and my training partner at the time ended up jumping in a CrossFit workout. Uh, it was a, it was an imam of overhead squats and snatches. What's an imam? Uh, that's as many, uh, minutes as possible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> doing a, it was a mold. I can't remember how many it was. Uh, snatches on one minute. Once you execute, you're finished for the rest of that minute. You rest until the following minute. Then you do overhead squats, rest, and then it was a cycle of that. I can't oh. remember how many, but uh, yeah, that sounds terrible. Yeah, just really That's trying to make people's hands fall asleep. You know, yeah, it's cool. Oh my god! Yeah, don't worry about it. That's out of the Yeah, it's just fitness. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Take your three weeks to fill your fingers again. Yeah. I've had that happen before, by the way. Oh yeah. Three yeah. weeks. Yeah, it was terrible. I've oh. seen. I we had a lady here. 
uh, this was probably six months ago. Her hands were numb for a couple months. Yeah, like, Terror. Did you, you did you see her? I don't. Not for that. I think I know who you're talking about. That. Dude, that was terrible. Like it scared me. Yeah, it's wild. My thumbs. I, I lost finger both my index fingers oh. after a bar muscle up workout. Whoa. That's awful. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I've never had that happen. <laughs> not for more than you don't cross it hard enough. <laughs> I, I guess not. <laughs> so uh, after, at the end of my senior season, I came back. I was training a little bit. I got offered. Uh, the opportunity to help build the athlete program down there, mm-hmm. uh, just training high school athletes, which I had been doing for this time, like I said, paying my dues, kind of earn some rapport, if you will. Um, and we, we did it. We blew it up. I worked there for about two years, coached CrossFit there, you know, really just fell in love with what CrossFit was. You actually coached CrossFit? Yeah. I, I you know, yeah, at one time, I was an athlete himself. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, but, you know, trained CrossFit. You know, lost a lot of weight, really was just the stereotypical CrossFitter, you know, get into that world. Um, and then so my goal ever since I fell in love with training when I was 15 was to own a gym, right? I used to say I wanted to own a sports-specific training facility, hmm. right? Like an Exos or something like that was something I wanted to right. do, right? And then I found out you can't make money training high school athletes, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Unless you just want to be in debt. That's cool. Yeah. You know, I, I do that good enough on my own without the high school athletes. Uh, Being dead. Yeah. Oh, it's the call of death. That's the call right. of death. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so, you know, falling in love with CrossFit, I was like, it would be so awesome to own a CrossFit gym. Right. And since so having owning a gym been my goal for a long time, my friend who invited me to that gym, his dad, sort of a serial entrepreneur doing a lot of little startups and stuff, we began talking about opening a gym. Right. He loved CrossFit at the same time, too. They, they both trained down there together. So we started talking about it and we, you know, dove into possibilities, you know, oh, let's, let's go look at this building. Oh, this building's awesome. Let's, you know, let's get a loan. Let's get like a hundred thousand dollar loan and, and, you know, just pack it out. And, you know, if you build it, they'll come, you know, uh, (laughs) you know, so, so we talked about that. Gym of dreams. Yeah. So (laughs) you, you found out that model, what happened. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) That that one stung. I could see it. (laughs) But, uh, anyway, uh, so anyway, we, we kept, we kept talking and talking and then it became, uh, well, let's just open it in the barn in my backyard and just, you know, see what happens and we'll go on from there. So we did, uh, we opened the barn strength and conditioning. We had our first workout on October 20th of 2014. Uh, we, yeah. Can't believe it's been that long. Yeah. And so uh, when we, uh, the barn was in his backyard was completely just infested with termites. It was in bad shape. We came in and, and almost rebuilt it from the ground up, painted it red, stacked two carports on top of one another out in the front to have like a 20 foot carport. It was about, it was about 400 square foot outside, 400 square foot inside, with probably only about 200 square foot of usable space inside. Had a little office and a bathroom upstairs. I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was very humble beginnings. But anyway, we were there for two years. My partner ended up having a heart attack and uh, had to have open heart surgery. And it gave him some time to kind of think about his life. He decided that where he was going was not the place he wanted to be anymore. He decided to get back to his roots of the real estate. And uh, we split up. I was at a good position uh, in the business to be able to move and, and get into a bigger facility, which is where we are now. Now we're the bar and fitness, uh, literally, I mean, 200 yards as the crow flies from the old barn. And uh, we've been here a little bit over. I know that. I had no idea where the old barn was. Yeah, I mean, it's I wasn't here. 200 yeah, yards that way. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And uh, across the nine mile? Uh, nine mile. And then the next street, uh-huh. 10 mile, right? Yeah. 10 mile. Uh, yeah. And then there's Sunday Road yeah. right there. The first house on oh, the right. Wow. Yep. I love that. Yep. Behind the, I mean, it's super sketchy. Like I, <laughs> I always like, it, it was the worst thing trying to convince people to come there. <laughs> it, yeah. Just c- come in the backyard. Yeah. It's cool. work out. Knock on the gate. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, pull down. And, and you know, I can't tell you how many times I would just tell people the address. Right. And then they, uh, they're looking for it. And then they call me. They're like, Hey, I only see a house. Like, yeah. Okay. Just pull yeah. down the driveway and look to the left. <laughs> and, uh, so that, so that was that. Now we're here. We, uh, we had CrossFit is sort of our, or I'm sorry, functional fitness because we've got affiliated at this point. Uh, functional fitness is our base. Uh, we, we train a lot of adults. We, we have an amazing community of a lot of loving, loving people that really just care for each other and, and really just love 
seeing everybody work hard for something together, which is absolutely amazing. I've never been, um, and not just because it's my own, but I've never been in a gym that has the feel that this gym has. And uh, also we do uh, Olympic weightlifting, obviously. We have a, a very competitive Olympic, Olympic weightlifting team with very high level state and national level weightlifters on it. Um, and then we, we train athletes, we do boot camp, you know, kind of the whole kebab, you know, with the, we do some functional fitness for kids, you know, mm-hmm. a little bit of everything. Yeah, the whole spectrum. Yeah, the whole spectrum of fitness. Very cool. Yeah. Great staff. Bailey, Bailey is a coach here, obviously, you know, been trying to drag CJ here forever. He, <laughs> he just does talks. Talks. <laughs> I just talk. I just talk to good guy. Too oh, man. Too, too many talks. So awesome. Too much talking. Well, thanks, Ryan. It's a good story. Um, Thank you. So, obviously, the next question is, what are your numbers? Oh. Uh, all time or currently? <laughs> uh, let's go all time and then we'll talk currently, okay. yeah. just to make me feel better about myself. Yeah, so all time is much better than currently. <laughs> yeah. So all time, whenever I was at my, my peak of weightlifting, it was right after football, right yeah. whenever I was starting to get into CrossFit, I pursued weightlifting for a while. Mm. And then I kind of just gave in to CrossFit. Because I knew I needed to be healthier. It's kind of what came into it. And then I really got into the sports side of it. So my best numbers, I was weighing about probably about 320 at the time. Uh, my best clean and jerk was 407. And my best snatch was 312. And that, Dang. Yeah. And I'm nowhere near that now. Like It has been a steep <laughs> slope of decline. What's that? Well, hey, you know why? Join business. Right. You work, yeah. you work. Right. I, I got a right. job. Yeah, you gotta quit I got a job. job. Shit. You should quit that. <laughs> That's <laughs> where that was the, the mistake that I made. <laughs> Man. Dang. So now I mean now I'm I'm lucky. I, I I'm re- my numbers are just all over the place. One day I might snatch two hundred, the next day I might snatch two fifty, you know, and then one day I might clean and jerk two seventy five, the next day I might clean and jerk three hundred, you know, like wow. it's just it's all over the place just because my, my training's inconsistent because I allow it to be. Sure. You know, it's 100% my fault. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm actually getting into a little bit more CrossFit again now. Oh. Yeah, trying to lean back down a little bit. That's good. It's, you know, it's bikini season. so <laughs> Right. He's only saying that, but it's solely for his golf game. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. That is 100% yeah. the reason. <laughs> Behind <laughs> the camera right there, there's six sets of golf clubs. <laughs> so um, it's for his golf game. I told him he has to rotate more outside yeah. of golf. And he was like, okay. Yeah, bro, you know, I'm trying to have more broad times, modal domains. I think that has to do with swinging a golf club. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> For sure. Um, well, cool. Yeah, what time are we at? We're plenty over. Plenty over? Awesome. Well, I so, think that'll be a good spot day. Yeah, that'll be good for today. Awesome. Well, thank you guys, and, and uh, thank you guys for listening or watching, and I and, uh, hope we see you soon. Please check out our Instagram, uh, Weightlifting Way of Life Instagram. Um, or if you're not already on the YouTube page, please check out our YouTube, uh, Weightlifting Way of Life. Thank you. Let's stay swole. Stay swole. I was going to say, I have, I have like a, a generally, a general like ending or slash. Oh, let's hear that. Come on. Yeah, we'll stay so, swole was the one we, yeah, I kind of Stay swole is always good. But I was like, you know, don't forget we're just an athlete, a coach and a physio talking fitness, rehab and, and gains. So. Man, that's way better. That's yeah, so good. We'll, okay. we'll do that one for now. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll work on it. It'll get better episode by episode. Thanks for listening, guys, and we'll see you next time.